Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Zorn OS 16.2. So why are we reviewing Zorn OS? Um, it's number 12 on the list on DistroWatch. Uh, we've got reviews for the other 11, and we've even got one for elementary as well. Um, uh, but Zorin's number 12, um, so that's why we're reviewing that today. This is distrowatch.com. This gives you reviews and news about all distributions, or most of them anyway. Uh, so this is Zorin OS when you first boot into it. And as you can see, it's a very clean, stylish looking interface. You have this welcome screen uh, where you can start the tour. Um, but I'm going to click no thanks to that. Uh, it's telling me I've got some updates. Um, not many by the looks of it, 75 kilobytes. Um, remind me later for that. And it's very Windows 7 esque, uh, the way uh, Zorin looks by default. You've got this uh, panel out at the bottom um, with the clock, you've got a system tray here, and then you've got quick launch icons, and Zorin brings up the menu. So if you're used to Windows 7, then you'll be very used to the look and feel of Zorin OS. And it's quite a straightforward interface to use. Uh, let's have a look at what a software is installed by default. So you've got clocks, files, um, the map, uh, Google Maps, a to-do list, text editor and weather. And then under games, uh, Solitaire, Mahjong, Mines, Quadrapassel and Sudoku. Basic set there, graphics, uh, GIMP is installed, uh, you've got an image viewer, LibreOffice is installed, and you've got a photo manager. Uh, under internet, you've got Firefox, and you've got Romina, which is a remote desktop client. Under office, you have LibreOffice, Libre and so that gives you a full office suite of a spreadsheet package, uh, a word processor, a uh, PowerPoint style app, and a Visio style app. And also under there, you have Evolution, which is an email client. And then under Sound and Video, uh, you've got Rhythm Box um, for audio. You've got the videos for playing movies. Uh, simple Screen Recorder, I've installed myself. Uh, other than that, you've got Passero, uh, uh, which is for creating and copying DVDs, if that's still a thing, in 2023. Uh, you've got Cheese Webcam Viewer. And that's everything there. Uh, under system tools, um, various system tools here. Um, disks for managing your disks, power statistics, software update. You've got the Tor, uh, Windows app support. We'll look at that later on. Uh, Zorin appearance and Zorin connect. We'll look at both, all of these later on. And then under utilities, um, archive manager, zip tool, backups. Uh, disk uses an analyzer and various other things like screenshots, terminal, etc. So let's have a look um, at our network situation. It hasn't found my Wi Fi, I don't think. Uh, yes, it has. Um, all I've got to do is click there and I can pick all my uh, Wi Fi um, that I want to connect to. So uh, that's working. Uh, down here you've got this software tool and this brings up your software app so if you want to install other software and you've got let's go shopping so um, in here you've got editors picks so um, VLC uh, media player retroarch for playing games uh, a few things in there uh, you've got Dropbox up here um, recent releases of software recommended games recommended audio video applications so Spotify is there so we can just click on Spotify and just click install and you'll see uh, Zorin is based on Ubuntu so you're going to get snaps as opposed to flat packs um, but let's install that Zorin's based on Ubuntu but it feels snappier than Ubuntu you can see that's installed in the background and whilst that's doing that you can scroll down and you've got all these categories that you can choose from you can of course go and search for packages so um, if I wanted to install Chrome interesting application found for that 
So you can see Spotify is installing very slowly, um, obviously because it's a snap. Uh, now, uh, I couldn't find Chrome in the search, but if I go down into communication and news, you can see Chrome is there, so I could install Chrome like that. It's just a place I can install. I don't think that's a snap. I think that's actually from the um, Google website. I can't be sure of that, though. So that's installing now as well. So I'm going to leave that all installing. Um, the search is quite slow whilst it's installing other applications, I've noticed. So as you see, Steam is available. Uh, the package manager is a little bit slow, I'm not going to lie. Uh, both searching and installing. But essentially everything's there. OK, so I'm now in the development section. And you can see the productivity tools for developers. There's a whole host of them here. Uh, a few highlights, though. Um, we have GitHub Desktop. IntelliJ for JavaScript. PyCharm for Python. I've uh, got these Qt creators, etc. as well. You've got the professional pie charm. And down at the bottom, you've got v uh, Visual Studio Code. You've also got WebStorm as well for de um, web development. Um, so I was just about to edit the video. Um, I was installing Caden Live. And I noticed, um, without any interference, that it's come up with FlatHub as an option. So it appears that Zorin comes with um, Debian, Snap, and FlatHub all set up to start with, which is actually a really good thing. So that's the um, software manager. It's a good software manager, but a wee bit slow. If I go to Sound Video, Spotify is now there. And you can see it's available. And Google Chrome is now installed as well. So you can make that the de default. And there we have my channel. Um, latest videos to come up. Um, we've got a Kali install. That's um, a short guide. It's not really for the everyday Linux user, which is why um, I haven't done a big song and dance about it. Uh, there's no voiceover or anything. It's just music showing you how to do it. Um, but yeah, you can see Chrome's working. OK, so we'll close that. Uh, let's look at some of the other features. Uh, let's look at some of these tools. So let's start off with uh, Zorin Appearance. Uh, so you've got various different layouts. Um, if you want more, you have to upgrade to the pro version of, of Zorin. Um, let's try a, a few of them out. So th this is the default one. This is a more Windows 11 style. The main difference between uh, this one and this one is that you get your tasks along the bottom here on the second one. And then you've got the more Ubuntu style desktop layout. Uh, which opens like this. And you can see um, I've got my simple screen recorder and my apps here. So if you like the more uh, GNOME look and feel, um, that's the one you go for. So that's uh, this version. And then it doesn't matter which version you use, by the way, when you press the Windows key, it will bring up your applications. And down here, you've got your workspaces. And then you've got themes. Um, so you've got Zorin, other. Uh, interfaces, um, total port buttons, or left or right. So that's these things here. Uh, enable animations, jelly mode, I'm not sure what that is. It won't allow me to, oh yes it will. Ah, wobbly windows. You can see the bounce effect there. Uh, the super key, what does it do? You can have either the activities overview, which is this, or you can have it set to the menu 
which is this depends on your on your workflow how you want to use that and then you've got activities hot corner and so you can have that so, so you possibly better having the hot corner and then the super key and then you've got taskbar settings down here um, the panel size so at the moment it's 48 but you can make it 32 um, panel position uh, and whether you want to display on all uh, monitors behavior and actions uh, desktop you can have icons on the desktop or not um, icon size and you can choose which one so I could have the home icon I could have the rubbish bin I can have all my mounted volumes and uh, network service etc and then we've got fonts so that's Azor in appearance and we have this Windows app support. Let's see what that brings us. Uh, so this package installs Wine um, compatible to layer as well as Play on Linux. So essentially you're getting the Wine packages installed so that if you want to run Windows programs you can. So we can click install there, you type in your password. And we'll allow that to install in the background. So uh, the next thing we're going to look at is this uh, Zorin Connect. And you can connect your computer with your mobile device. Uh, so you sync your phone with notifications with your computer, pass photos from your phone, reply to SMSs. Let's see how that works. So there's a Zorin Connect app that you can install onto your phone or your computer. So I'm going to install that onto my phone. And you can see that's appeared now and you can click pair and I'm going to accept the pairing on my phone and you can send and receive files um, these are the things you can use and notifications commands and sharing so I'm going to send a file from my phone and you see in the top there it's received a file so if I open the folder I have a file here you can see that there's a video come down and it's of uh, the circus I uh, went to see last night um, so yeah that that's worked okay um, next we have the Windows support says it's now installed. So if I go to Windows Apps, you've now got Play on Linux. And you can install a program um, on there. Um, to show that working, let's go and get something. So I've downloaded PokerStars to my machine. So if I go to download, you can see that's there. I can open with install Windows application. Whilst that's doing that, let's look at uh, the print situation. Oh, you can see PokerStars has just loaded here in the background. Um, so you can just install it. Read to there. And this is a Windows executable, perfect example of a Windows executable working on a Linux machine. Uh, yes, so what we're looking for, printers. And you can see it's already found my printer, so I don't have to worry about that. Let's have a look at Bluetooth. So we need a if we look here. I've got a few videos that have been creating today. So what we're going to do is going to turn the Bluetooth on. And we know Bluetooth is working because it's managed to connect via the Zoran app. But uh, so you can see cylinder BT here. This is speakers. And you can see that's now connected. And you can see PokerStars is actually loaded and I'm able to log in and play if I want. Oh, we do have an hour. Oh no, there we go. It's available now. I can now log in and everything's fine. Uh, so, prove a point. There you go. I can enter my login details and I would be able to play a game. 
So that's how you run an executable. Uh, back to the Bluetooth situation. Uh, that's disconnected at the minute. Um, I'm going to find a video to play. So you might have heard that start playing then. So let's get that to come out of the Bluetooth speaker if we can. So that's connected. If we go to sound, you can see that's now connected to cylinder BT. It says connected. Uh, I hope you heard that. Um, that was the Bluetooth speaker working. Um, it's a little bit temperamental, um, but it's a little bit temperamental on every distribution. So I think it's possibly the speaker itself as opposed to um, Bluetooth on Zorin. So um, we can leave that there. So hardware support is working fine. Um, we can install Windows applications. The desktop's perfectly fine. Installing applications is a wee bit slow, but you've seen it does actually work. Uh, you just have to be a bit patient. And uh, yeah, so Zorin OS is looking pretty good. Uh, so the rest of the settings, um, this is standard GNOME type settings here. So we can change the background. Uh, You've got this mountain one as default, but there's other ones you can choose. If you want something a bit darker, got a bit more colourful, a nice mountain ridge view, uh, more arid desert view. A calming sea influence. Uh, you can choose um, what you want. Uh, you can add your own pictures in as well. Um, just click add picture there. Uh, you can set up notifications. You can you've seen how you set the sound to be where you want it to go to. Uh, displays you can display over multiple monitors if you have them, and we've seen printers etc. So uh, this is how you'd configure Zorin. It's all um, fairly straightforward and easy to use. Uh, it's actually really really good. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, the only thing I I would say is I prefer flat packs to snaps, um, but I can't complain about Zorin OS. It's actually really, really nice, and it feels a lot more mature than the last time I used it. Before I leave the review, um, I want to talk about Zorin OS Pro. Um, this is the paid for part of Zorin OS, and let's see what it actually gives you. Uh, so it's thirty nine pounds, um, excluding the sales tax. So what do you get? Uh, you pick any desktop. So um, there's eight desktop layouts. So there's a Mac OS feel, there's Windows 1, Windows 11, uh, Ubuntu-like, Windows Classic, etc. Um, you get professional grade creative suite. I'm not sure what that is. It exactly doesn't say, does it? Uh, advanced productivity suite and and cast your desktop to the big screen. I'm pretty sure you can install software to do this anyway, but it gives you it gives you stuff for um, without you having to install it, and it's probably configured the the way you you want it to be. Um, I'm not selling it. Um, it's up to you whether you go for the um, paid for version or not. And there's a comparison tool at the bottom that shows you what you get with each version. So for core, you get LibreOffice, like you get LibreOffice, Pro, you get LibreOffice. Uh, Pro, you get the advanced GNOME desktop, lightweight version, you get XFCE. So on connects on the Pro and Core, uh, standard desktop layouts on all three, and then you've got premium desktop layouts on Pro, it doesn't say what this creative suite of apps is. It'd be nice to know um, what that is. Uh, advanced productivity software. It doesn't actually tell you what these things are, but you do get installation support as well. So if you get problems, you, you're going to get support um, above and beyond your normal um, support, I'd imagine. So that really is the end of the review. Uh, my thoughts on Zorin OS are it's very nice. 
very easy to install, very easy to use. If you're coming from a Windows 7 onwards background, yeah, kind of like the desktop look and feel. It's quite crisp running these things as well. You can see quite responsive. Uh, then bit I found it a bit less responsive was the software manager. You've got the desktop appearance thing to change the desktop appearance. You've got the Zorin Connect um, to connect to your phone. Uh, you've got um, the Windows apps things to install um, Windows applications. I'm not saying every Windows application is going to work, by the way. It will be hit and miss, but Zorin introduces it quite well. And uh, all of your hardware support is perfectly fine. So if you like this interface, then Zorin is really good. And it's a good alternative um, to Linux Mint as well. Um, and that's the end of the review. If you like the review, uh, give it a thumbs up, um, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.